everyone! Welcome to the Jada in Stitches show. Today we have another magical baby blanket pattern for you that uses a single cake of yarn, hence it being magical. <laughs> I love to make baby blankets in non-traditional colors. They are beautiful, they are unique, and best of all, they're good for boys or girls. So to that end, we are using a magical ball of Lion Brand Mandela for this project. And we'd like to thank Lion Brand Yarns for sponsoring today's video. We're going to put a link to Lion Brand in the description box down below, and you can check out all of the Mandela original balls that are all named after magical things like pixies and gnomes and warlocks and unicorns. Any one of those is perfect for this project. Or you can use Mandela Baby, which are all named after magical places like Wishing Well or Acre Woods or Diagon Alley. Any one of these balls makes a beautiful baby blanket. You want to make sure you have a mandala that is a size 3 lightweight yarn and that is 590 yards. So Lion Brand has a whole bunch of mandala products now, but you want a mandala that is size 3 lightweight yarn, 590 yards. This blanket measures 70 by 70 centimeters or 28 by 28 inches after blocking. And we're going to use something called the brick stitch. It's a really sweet and simple little stitch pattern. And we're going to line the edges, just the top and the bottom, with little fleur de lis too. So it's going to have a very magical, royal kind of quality to it. Any one of those self striping pretty balls of mandala will do. I had a real hard time deciding which one I wanted to use. <laughs> so let's grab our hooks, grab our balls of mandala, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we'll stitch it up together. <laughs> Easily find all of our crochet tutorials. Type youtube.com slash Jada and Stitches into your web browser and we'll see you there. In order to make our one cake baby blanket, I'm using a classic Mandela. You can also use Mandela Baby. So long as it's a size 3 lightweight Mandela cake and it's 590 yards. And any one of those color combinations looks beautiful with this particular pattern stitch. You want to have a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook I'm using is a 5.0 millimeter, also known as an H or an 8 in the US, a 6 in the UK. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to begin with a slip knot. The brick stitch pattern can be worked over any multiple of three stitches plus two at the end. So any multiple of three chains plus two. So we're going to chain 116. 114 is the multiple of three plus two chains gives us 116. 116 chains to begin. Once you have 116 chains, you want to keep it from twisting. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can just very slowly let it run between your thumb and forefinger as you work, and that'll help keep those chains sitting on top. So you want the two loops sitting on top and the little single loops here sitting on the bottom. Or you can sort of press it flat on a work surface and work on that table. So if you have problems with your chains turning on you, that's a couple of little tips you can use. We're going to skip the first chain from the hook and single crochet into the second chain from the hook to begin. And the first row, or every odd row of this brick stitch pattern, is what I like to think of as the mortar. We're going to chain two, we're going to skip two chains, find the third one, and single crochet into it. Chain two, Skip two chains, find the third one, and single crochet into it. Chain two. Skip two chains, find the third one, and single crochet into it. And that is the repeater all the way across. Single crochet, chain two, skip two, single crochet. Looks like this. Do a few more. Chain two. Skip two chains, single crochet into the third chain. Chain two. Skip two chains, single crochet into the third chain. And you'll notice as I'm chaining, chain two, 
and skipping, I'm making sure that my foundation row isn't twisting on me. So I'm only ever just worrying about two or three chains at a time. And I'm always making sure that those little loops line up nice and neatly on top for me. You're going to go ahead and repeat that all the way across and I'll catch up with you at the end of row one. Once you get across to the end, you should have, after your second last single crochet, three chains left. So we're going to chain two, skip the last two chains, and then single crochet into the very last chain. And you should have 38 little chain two spaces that you can sort of put your finger through all the way across. At the end of an odd row, so you finish your row with a single crochet, you chain three, and the chain three at the beginning of an even row will count as a double crochet. So we're going to spin our work around now. And this is a very simple row. I'd say both rows are pretty simple, but this one is, is especially so. Into each chain two space, you're going to work two double crochet. So right into the space. And then into the single crochet that sort of anchors the space, you're just going to double crochet. So double crochet right into the top of that stitch. And then we start all over again. Double crochet twice into the chain two space. You can think of it too like there's two chains, so I have to put two double crochet into that space. And then when you get to the stitch, the little single crochet, you're going to double crochet right into the top of it. So if it helps to sort of turn it so you can see the top of the stitch, you're putting your hook right underneath it, and double crochet. So two double crochet in every chain two space, and a double crochet in the top of each of those little single crochet stitches from the previous row. And that's all you're doing all the way across. And you're kind of creating a firm, sort of solid row of just plain old double crochet with these cute little spaces below them. So double crochet into the top of each stitch and two double crochet into each chain two space all the way across. Row two is just double crochets all the way across. So a double crochet in the top of each single crochet from the row before, and two double crochet into each chain two space. When you get to the end of an even row, or in this case row two, you double crochet twice into the last chain two space. And then double crochet into the top of the last stitch. And it's small, so don't miss it. And including the chain three that began the row, you'll have 115 stitches all the way across at the end of row two. You're going to have 38 chain two spaces in every odd row and 115 stitches in every even row. And remember, that chain three that begins every even row, this little guy over here, that counts as a double crochet. So don't forget to count it when you're counting up all of your stitches. And that is the repeater pattern. So here we go, we're gonna do an odd row again. We're gonna chain one. So to begin an odd row, you chain one, turn your work. And the little chain one that we use as a turning chain does not count as a stitch. So because of that, we're going to single crochet right into the top of that double crochet from the previous row. So you just single crochet right into the top of that first stitch. That chain one is completely ignored. It doesn't count as anything. It just turns the corner for us. And our little odd row commences. We chain two, skip two stitches, find the third, and single crochet into it. Chain two, skip two stitches, find the third, 
and single crochet into it. So it's single crochet, chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch. And that's all you're going to do all the way across. That is an odd row. Every odd row is the same. And I'll see you at the end. As you get across to the end of an odd row, you can see all your little chain two spaces there. The row will always end single crochet, chain two, skip two stitches, and you're going to single crochet in the top of the turning chains. So that chain three counts as a double crochet, and you just find the top of the chain three. You can use whatever part of it you want, and single crochet to finish an odd row. You'll still have 38 little chain two spaces all the way across. And that's what it's starting to look like. Let's start an even row again together. So odd rows are the mortar, even rows are the bricks. That's the way I like to think of it. The odd row is the little flat single crochet, chain two, skip two, single crochet stitch. Every even row begins by chaining three, which counts as a double crochet. Turn your work. Because that chain three counts as a double crochet, we're not working into that first stitch, this little guy here. We're going to work directly into the chain two space. You're going to work two single crochet into the chain two space and every chain two space all the way across because all we're doing for the brick row double crochets when you get to a stitch right there double crochet into it so double crochet twice into each chain two space double crochet into each little single crochet from the previous row you'll have 115 stitches all the way across When you're finishing off an even row or a brick row, you work two double crochet into that last space. And then a double crochet into the top of that last stitch. And it's small, so don't miss it. There we go. And all you're gonna do now is repeat the even and odd rows. So the odd row is the little short row, the mortar, and the even row is the tall row with the double crochet. That's what I like to think of as the bricks. We're going to do a total of 57 rows. 57 rows will have us ending on an odd row. So an odd row, chain one, turn, single crochet into the very first stitch because the chain one turn doesn't count as anything but a turn. And then you're off to your regular little chain two, skip two, single crochet. So an odd row is what we're going to end on. That will be row 57. And every odd row is just double crochets all the way across. And don't forget that the chain three that begins an even row counts as a double crochet. So when you get across to the end of an odd row, you're single crocheting into the top of those chain three turning chains. So don't forget that. Chain three counts as a double crochet, but the chain one turning doesn't count as anything. Oops, yep, yeah, chain two, good. Chain two, skip two, single crochet. So you're going to repeat odd row, even row, odd row, even row, all the way until you get to 57 rows. And that should leave us with just enough to make a tiny little neat trim border. I've now done 57 rows of the brick stitch. You can do as many rows as you want if you're making a blanket that's larger. Obviously you're gonna need more yarn. <laughs> but as many rows as you want as long as you end on an odd row. And the odd row, of course, is that little mortar row. So 57 rows all together for the one cake blanket. And now we're going to get into the border. This is a border with a bit of a difference. There's lots of interest up the top and the bottom, and then the sides are just sort of small and neat and tidy. Uh, it's kind of a fun way to finish off a blanket, and it's a little more unusual, which is another reason that I like it for a non-traditionally colored baby blanket. We're going to begin by chaining three, and we're gonna turn our blanket, and we're gonna make a series of what look like little fleur-de-lis across the top of the blanket. 
So your chain three, you're going to slip stitch into that first stitch. And before we move on, we're going to chain five. We're going to slip stitch into the same place, so the same place that you just chained out of. Slip your hook back in there. And then we're going to chain three again. So this becomes a crowded little stitch, but just take your time. Chain three, and you can see it now, slip stitch back into the same place. So a little fleur de lis is chain three, slip stitch, chain five, slip stitch, chain three, slip stitch, all into the same stitch. And it looks like that. Now we're going to chain two. We're going to single crochet into the next single crochet. We're going to chain two, and now we're going to make another little fleur de lis in the next stitch. So we're ignoring our little chain two spaces, we're only focusing on the stitches. And every other stitch just gets a regular single crochet in it, but let's do another fleur de lis. So we're going to slip stitch to begin into that little stitch there. We're going to chain three, slip stitch into the same stitch chain five, and slip stitch into the same stitch, and chain three more. And it helps to just sort of keep pressing the little leaves, I guess they're like, out of the way, and slip stitch. So chain three, slip stitch, chain five, slip stitch, chain three, slip stitch, all into the same place and you get these cute little fleur de -lis. In between fleur de -lis, you chain two. That crosses the chain two space. You single crochet into the single crochet from the previous row. And then you chain two again, and into the next stitch, so you cross that chain two space, into the next stitch, you create a fleur de -lis. So slip stitch, chain three, slip stitch, chain five, slip stitch, chain three, slip stitch. And that's all you're going to do all the way across. So your little fleur de lis are separated by chain two, single crochet, chain two. So they're not bunched together and you can see them sitting neatly across the top of your blanket. Your last fleur de lis will be worked into the top of the very last stitch of the row and you'll have 20 of them running across the top of your blanket in total. So 20 little fleur de lis, and when we do this across the bottom, you'll have the same number, 20 fleur de lis in total. The sides of the blanket are a little simpler. We're going to just very neatly work our way down just to sort of smooth off the edges. So we're going to begin by chaining two. So right after we finished our last fleur de lis, we're gonna chain two and into the edge of an odd row, so this is the little, the little mortar row, you can identify it easily by seeing that space, just plunk your hook right through the edge of it and single crochet. Chain two, try not to keep your, uh, try not to make your stitches, I should say, too tight. So you wanna chain, not loose, but not tight. Jump down to the next mortar row or the next odd row, put your hook through the edge and single crochet. And this is all you're doing, all the way up and down the sides of the blanket. So you chain two, skip down to an odd row, slip your hook through the edge of it, and single crochet. And the reason you don't want your chains to be too tight or too loose is because you don't want to sh sort of tighten up the side of your blanket and you don't want it to be sort of floppy and loose. You want it to look nice and straight up and down. Just sort of to look like the edges Kind of like that little mortar, that space row is now running down the edge of the blanket. And both sides are gonna look like that. So chain two, skip down to the odd row, slip your hook through the edge of it, single crochet, and that's all you're gonna do all the way down. So that's what it looks like running down the side of our blanket. Nice and neat and tidy, very, very simple. When you get to the bottom, you're going to work a single crochet into the second last odd row, and here's that row we began with. So there's our chained 
foundation row and of course row one was a mortar row so we're going to chain two we're going to skip over that even brick row and into that first chain we're going to slip stitch so we're not single crocheting we're slip stitching because we're going to start immediately with a fleur de lis because we're going to work those all the way along the bottom too so we chain three slip stitch into the same place chain five slip stitch into the same place and chain three more finish that fleur de lis with a slip stitch that's the one for the bottom corner and just like the top it's the exact same pattern you're going to chain two find the bottom of the next stitch so you just skip the space find the stitch single crochet into the bottom of it chain two skip the space find the next stitch and start a fleur de lis so slip stitch chain three slip stitch chain five slip stitch chain three slip stitch and you can continue the exact same pattern that you worked across the top all the way along the bottom you'll have 20 little fleur de lis all the way across the bottom mirroring the top and when you get to the end your last fleur de lis will be worked into the last stitch that will be the first chain that you made and you may still have your little tail hanging off of it and now we're going to just do exactly what we did up this side that we did up the other side so we're going to chain two we're going to hop over top i'm going to weave that in later hop over top of the brick row find the big space which is the next odd row and we're just going to slip our hook through the edge of it and single crochet there we go chain two hop over to the next odd row slip your hook through the edge of it you can use whatever part of it feels good <laughs> or makes sense and remember you don't want to make your stitches too tight or too loose you want to keep that nice even sort of edging going all the way up the side and that's it you're going to work that all the way up this last side of the blanket and i'll see you at the top once you get back up to the top single crochet into the edge of the second last odd row chain two and into the same place that your first little fleur de lis is anchored in right there you're just going to slip stitch so no single crochet just slip stitch to join and now you can fasten off you'll probably have just a few yards left and you can take a moment to weave in your short tails so you'll probably have one up here and one down at the bottom too now that you're done with all the crocheting I highly recommend that you block your blanket this will allow you to make the pattern show up nicely so you want to be able to see those little spaces in between all of the bricks so the mortar row wants to stand out from the brick row so block it you can either lightly get it wet or wash it uh, gently by hand in the sink that's what I recommend and then pat it down and pin it into place on a towel let it lay flat overnight to dry you can also steam block lightly steam block it don't touch a hot iron to your crochet or knit work it will flatten we have additional help with those two different kinds of blocking we'll put those links in the description box down below definitely give it a block though because it'll make it look its best and that's exactly what you want to do when you're giving it away as a gift just in time for all the baby showers that are on their way. I know, it's sort of baby shower season. A lovely little blanket that won't take you very long at all to make up. And it's the perfect size for a new baby or a preemie, for a crib or to cover over a car seat, maybe to go for a walk with the pram, or just for a toddler to pull around the house. These are great sized blankets. And remember, there's no one right size for a baby blanket because baby blankets have a whole bunch of different purposes. But this one only uses one cake of yarn. So high on my list of projects that I love. We hope you enjoyed making this along with us this week and we will see you soon here on the Jaded Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye everyone. Hi everyone, this is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. 
Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.